Welcome to the Person Behind the Pads podcast, a chat with a Colts player about life off the gridiron. Now here's Matt Taylor, the voice of the Colts, from inside the Indiana Union Construction Industry Radio Studio. Yes, welcome into the first episode installment of the Person Behind the Podcast series. I'm Matt Taylor, and this is our new podcast series with a Colts player talking about life outside of football. There's only one rule. We're not allowed to talk football, no football topics whatsoever. We'll talk about life, family, food, growing up, this, that, and everything. Our first guest, Bernard Ryman, offensive lineman for the Indianapolis Colts. Bernard, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm fantastic. You're our guinea pig for this, all right? So you got, we, got, we have to make right. sure it goes well here, okay? All right, we'll try. <laughs> Absolutely. So for you, I think a lot of people know your story. You're kind of familiar with, with how you grew up. Um, I think avid Colts fans know that you're from Austria, um, didn't begin playing football until age 14. You grew up in a town called Steinbrunn, correct? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Um, yes. Well, that's that's where my mom currently lives. Okay. Um, I was okay. born and raised originally in Vienna. Okay. Um, and then at like 10 years of age, um, parents split up, and then they both kind of moved into like the suburbs of Vienna. And then my mom moved to Steinbrunn. Okay. Yeah, that's where so I came from. So what, what, if you can, what what was your childhood like? How did you grow up? What what kind of kid were you growing up in, in adolescence? Um, I mean, I would say pretty typical for a European kid. Grew up playing soccer. Yeah. Going to school. Um, hung out with friends. Um we lived in the city, so it was it was pretty easy to to get around and be like pretty independent and um, you know go to the movies and mm-hmm. um, we we're pretty mobile because we didn't like rely on cars or anything. So that's that was a lot of fun. Um, I grew up in as an only child, okay. so I had most of my time with friends like outside the family, and yeah, that's how I grew up. Were you always an athlete? Did you? Did, did did sports always sort of come easy for you? Um, yeah, I always loved being outside. I mean, my parents were very big into hiking, mountain biking, skiing. Right. Um, so also the typical um, Austrian things to do. And so that's just what how I grew up. And then just playing soccer on the side was, was always something I just mm-hmm. did. And... It's the, the the school system is a little bit different, so you don't get involved in school sports. You kind of have to find your sport okay. on your own. Um, so you play club soccer instead of like school soccer, and um, which is cool on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's it's kind of tricky to then try different sports and figure out what you actually like. Right. Um, probably would have liked football a lot sooner if I had a <laughs> chance to try it. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, growing up, I didn't even know anything about football and um or baseball or, or basketball mm-hmm. so uh, i i grew up just knowing soccer and so that's just what i did and then obviously skiing in the winter time is is soccer the main sport for uh in in in, in, in terms of where you grew up in terms of it, it's most accessible to you growing up was was it soccer absolutely um but then um over the last couple of years like football has become more and more popular over in, in europe yeah everywhere really um, but in Austria, I mean, they, they're starting like a European semi-professional league. Um, and they have more and more guys going play college football, NFL football. Right. Um, so it's definitely getting, it's trending into the, the right. right direction, I would say. Did you grow up speaking English? When, when did you learn English? Um, in Austria, you learn English as like your second language okay. in, in school. So you probably start in like elementary school singing like some songs Uh and then starting like middle school you actually have to start learning um, vocabulary start writing essays and right um but then it's just it becomes a just a class in school every year and right you get used to it so you talked about wishing that you were exposed to football sooner than you were How, how did you become exposed to football and was it love at first sight for you absolutely um i mean my my dad he he bought a house and um just one day pretty randomly we got home saw the neighbor kids throw around a, a football like what is that yeah right, right? so it's just an egg-shaped what's ball. this thing yeah um i ended up joining them 
yeah had no idea how to throw it how to catch it or anything but right thought it was kind of cool um didn't know how to tackle either but you know it, it was just fun playing <laughs> around so um and then after that i i kind of you know started looking around for mm-hmm. club teams that would um offer american football and then i found the vienna vikings and right started playing football there. and so you're about 14 years old when this happens yep. right okay so kind of you know hitting that growth spurt you know going uh growing up and, and doing all of those things what what exactly does a club football team in austria look like does it i mean how many players are on the team do you play games do you practice like what does it consist of um yeah so you you play year round um or you practice year round um the season was usually in the fall mm-hmm. um similar to high school football here um we had one of the the biggest teams um just because it was located in vienna Mm -hmm. um which is the the biggest city in austria so you just had the most kids obviously um to choose from um so we were probably around like 100 kids or something like on on one team it was split up into age groups so you had like the under um 16 group the under 18 group and then you just started the adult league right um and it goes down to like under 12 and under 10 years old too um, which I never played, but mm-hmm. they have younger younger kids playing football too. Did you dominate right away? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what position were you playing? Um, so I started off as a receiver. Yeah, uh, came straight out of my soccer career. was was pretty skinny. <laughs> um, didn't even know the rules at that point. Um, all they told me was, you know, run straight look for the ball and then catch it <laughs> um so it was it was pretty pretty awkward at first but um, right i started getting a hang of it and then um starting to become more successful and right um yeah i mean at that point how, how serious about football were you i mean were the wheels in your head spinning like hey i can i can pursue this at a high level and make something of myself doing this sport were you there yet at that point um i would say no i was just you know just loving it having fun having fun with it yeah and i had some guys um just finishing up like and a year as an exchange student in the united states Mm -hmm. telling us all about you know high school football sure the the hype around it yeah um you start you know seeing it in movies more and more and you you, um kind of wish you you're part of that yeah so and then at that point i just thought high school football is like hey that's the coolest thing i've ever seen so I'm i'm gonna try doing that um and that's what when I decided to become an exchange student, which is kind of expensive to do. Um, mm-hmm. So obviously you're, gonna, you're, you're trying to find a job. Um, I was very lucky that my parents were able to help me out too. Um, otherwise, that would not have happened. Sure. So then I became an exchange student in Michigan, which then ultimately led to me getting recruited to play at Central Michigan. Yeah. But that wasn't the initial plan at all. No. What was the initial plan then? To just have fun at high school football. Yeah. Play on the Friday night lights. Um, was that your main motivation to come to the States to play high school football? Yes. I mean, if you ask my mom, then I would definitely, <laughs> I, I definitely told her I wanted to, you know, education, and, education, yeah. um, new experience, <clears throat> um, you know, put something <laughs> on the resume. Um, you can do that too. Right. Yeah. Um, but no, that was definitely my, my biggest draw to the United States. Yeah. Um, I love the sport. So, yeah. All right. Well, after a, a quick search uh, of of you know just how big football has become in Austria, um, you know back then and then certainly now. But you are the first Austrian-born player, from what I can tell, to play in the NFL in over 35 years. So a quick search on Pro Football Reference, you're just one of seven Austrian-born players ever to play in the National Football League. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, do you feel like you're, uh, or do you understand how much of a trailblazer you are for football and? in your home country um yeah i'm trying not to think about it too much i mean i'm just i was going through the same exact same recruiting process to college and sure the same process for the whole thing um so i was just trying to be the best player possible i'm not just trying to be you know mm-hmm. the best player from austria I'm, it's just right. about being a, a player in general yeah so yeah. well going back to the foreign exchange program how hard of a decision was that for you and then once you did make that decision how hard was that for your parents and your family to to see you move overseas for a year um i mean that was probably pretty easy 
um because it was just set to be 10 months yeah um so there was like a, a begin date and then there was like that was a clear end to it mm-hmm. um so it was really just like a at the airport it was a see you later more than a goodbye sure um so that was probably the the easiest goodbye and then obviously when you leave for college then mm-hmm. they kind of realize oh this is going to be more than just this 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 10 month yeah. period um but yeah so they they we're all really supportive. Obviously, sad that I'm not around as much, mm-hmm. but um, we still FaceTime a lot, trying to do it every couple of weeks. Right. So, but then obviously the time difference makes a makes it difficult. No. <laughs> They're six hours ahead, so by the time we usually get done um, here um, at the facilities, they probably get a, get about ready to go to bed or yeah. like they're already asleep. So, right. We try to do it on the weekends. Makes a lot of sense to uh, sync up those schedules there. Now, I, I read when you were filling out your, your paperwork or your profile for a host family to come over uh, to the United States as an international foreign exchange student, you marked two jobs as, as potential future professions. You put future NFL player, which makes sense. Here you are. Uh, and then you also put banker. <laughs> what, yeah. what was going on there? Um, I just always liked working with numbers. Yeah. Um, so that's just, I like numbers. I thought that was the only way I can do finance. Kind of job. And yeah. Yeah. With is that what you would be doing? You think if you weren't a, a, a starting left tackle in the NFL? Um, yeah, I mean my, and I started off as a business major in college mm-hmm. until switching it, um, to statistics and actuarial science, which is a lot more numbers than, <laughs> right. than, um, a banker. <laughs> that is so yeah, absolutely. I would definitely be doing something with, with numbers. Um, and then the more I got involved with football, obviously, I think mm-hmm. down the down the line, I would definitely want to do something, you know, in the analytics field in football. Yeah. But which still has a lot to do with numbers. No so. doubt, no doubt. And you still got time to do both, right? Right. You're a very young guy and bright head on your shoulders. Now, for those that don't know, and I don't know, uh, the the foreign exchange student program. Do you have much of a say on on where you go in terms of location and the family and everything like that? Uh, not at all. Um, it's kind of like it's got to be pretty nerve wracking, right? It it is. It is. It's it's kind of like a weird online, you know, <laughs> dating form. Yeah. Where you basically just sign up, right? Um, put in, you write an essay about yourself. You fill out what you want to do, maybe mm-hmm. in your life, um, and like kind of write about just your personality and what you're, what you like to do. Um, and then any family in the country can pick you. Wow. Um, obviously, you can decline, um, you know, if there's, like, some issues, if there's, like, a – Yeah. If they didn't have a football program, I might have <laughs> considered yeah. it or something, <laughs> um, which I don't know how often that happens. Right. But, um, yeah, and then on a random, I don't know, Tuesday night or something, I get a Facebook message from a family like, hey, we just picked you. That's great. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's it's it's pretty nerve wracking, but I, w- I was really fortunate to yeah. end up in a in a you know football loving family, and yep, that's what happened. So you end up in Delton, Michigan. That's about a half hour north of Kalamazoo, and about four hours north of Indianapolis. Uh, your host family, last name the Ferris's, correct? Correct. Um, so what what did you think of them initially? Like when you first met them, uh, you, there's obviously a ton of uh, ideas and thoughts going through your head coming from Austria to the States, but then meeting them for the first time. What were your first impressions of, of the town, the house, and, and their family dynamic? Um, the family was very um, big. I mean, the, the, the hostad being a former um, lineman at Central Michigan. Yeah. Um, he was, um, you know, always stayed big, and then um, all, the, all the kids were athletic, mm-hmm. um, tall. So, I mean, I I fit in in pretty well. So it, it was always fun, you know, competing with with my host brother, um, competing, but then also having fun at the same time. And right, we we you know kept pushing each other, and um, both ended up getting recruited to Central Michigan. Yeah. So we ended up playing football together in college. So that's that was really cool. Um, well, yeah, and then the the town itself, it was a small town. Um, feeling it it was awesome. It was, it was a little bit of a culture shock for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, um, everything you can ask for. I mean, we, we made the playoffs, the whole town <laughs> rallied behind us. So it was, 
It was awesome. That's was that Friday night experience. lights feel. I'm sure you were going for. Right? Oh yeah, like we went to the playoff games and they had like the fire trucks and everything rolling <laughs> out with us. So it was it was awesome. Town was shuts just, down, right? Oh, the, yeah. the local barber shop closes at three o'clock in the afternoon, right? That's yeah. Seen from a movie for sure. Now, what Definitely. was the biggest um, culture shock for you, or the the biggest thing you had to adjust to in terms of American culture? Huh. I mean, it's not. It was there was nothing like super crazy. Yeah, you, you learn a lot just from the sport, mm-hmm. um, from from the people you meet through American football in Austria. Um, so I was, I was never like caught off guard by anything. Mm-hmm. Um, it might have been like the little things, like, mm-hmm. um, you know, how you know going hunting and stuff. It's mm-hmm. just something you don't do in Austria. Yeah, um, doing it here was was awesome to do, and um, there was just like. Yeah, little things like that you don't really get to do in Austria, but you can do it here, and um, right. having the freedom to do so is it's just awesome. Now, when you came over, uh, this is sort of a football question, so we're getting kind of in the fringe oh there. <laughs> but, I mean, when you came over, you came over to play football. That was a, a big motivation for you. Did you did you dominate right away? I mean, how, how different was the football that you grew up with versus playing American football for the first time? Um, well, back in Austria, we had a lot of – coaches from the United States um, so we ran a pretty um, modern offense ran the spread similar offense. yeah um, similar to most NFL teams um, but then coming back to the high like coming going over to the United States for high school football mm-hmm. it was a very small school um, had about I don't know like 30 kids on the team or something and we ran the wing T offense so there was absolutely no room for a receiver in there <laughs> no. um, a lot of polling guards right right <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, then that was my first time playing tight end. Okay. Um, first time me blocking the line of scrimmage. Yeah, which yeah. Was also something to get used to. Sure. Um, but it was it was it was cool. I mean, very different offense, obviously, but in very uh, slightly different position. But I ended up loving it, and then ended mm-hmm. up getting recruited as a tight end to Central Michigan. Right. So that that worked out nicely. Now, did you did you go to Central Michigan because, like you said. Uh, Raleigh Ferris, that would be your host father. Is yeah. that is that is that the correct term? Is that what you called him? Um, yeah, I would. I would yeah, so, so your your host father Raleigh, and then Titan, who you became very very close with. Uh, he also went to Central Michigan as well. Was that the main motivation for you to kind of follow in their footsteps in the recruiting process? Um, to a certain extent, I would say it definitely helped have sure. these ties right. to Central Michigan and having knowing mm-hmm. that you're gonna get someone um, there. Mm-hmm. That you already, you already have a relationship with, um, but I would mostly say just the coaching staff at Central Michigan. Yeah, just kind of means the most, and yeah, didn't have many offers. So, H- how how close are you with with that family still today? Yeah, we we definitely keep in touch. Um, I think I saw them a couple times at training camp last year. Correct. So they yeah, it's not too far of a drive for them. Yeah. Um, so they came down. Um, they they still support me in every way they can, which is awesome, and. Um, We'll still try to stay in touch. Obviously, it's tricky now with like the mm-hmm. season, and everything to see each other for holidays or anything. But right, um, you know, we still, you know, get on the phone every once in a while. Um, but yeah, that's that's the way it should be. I like it. Again, it's only a four hour drive from from there to uh, to Indianapolis and Lucas Oil Stadium. Now let's talk. Let's fast forward to to present day. What's life like for you present day? How are you acclimating to? The city of Indianapolis after one year under your belt here with the Colts. Oh, my fiance and I, we both love it here. Yeah. Um, we moved down here, um, moved initially to an apartment, and then just recently moved um, to a house. Um, but, yeah, we, we love in Indianapolis area. Um, so many things to do. Um, love going downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, Favorite place downtown? Ooh. Either restaurant or hangout area or, or park or anything like that? We like going to the parks. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a tricky <laughs> one. We've been to. Dang, we went to like one of the best Mexican places I've been in a long time. Downtown it was. Downtown. There you go. Um, I forgot what it was called. I'm trying to think, is it uh, there's a not a not a downtown? Hayden Clark's in here. He's a he's a downtown guy. No, it might have been Nada. Yeah, Nada's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's so that, right. That's right in that the heart of downtown. Yep. Right. Um. But then, other than that, we enjoy the the quiet sure. of, um, of Zionsville now. Sure. Um, so that's that's a lot of fun, especially with the dog now um, that we got. 
last year. Got a golden retriever. Yep. And he he's loving it. So. What kind of where, where did you uh, where did you get the dog? Uh, my fiance found him on on Facebook um, from a family that lived like up north somewhere. Yep. Um, like northern part of Indiana. What's your dog's name? Dax. Oh yeah. Yep. Any inspiration behind that? I'm pretty sure she gave him name based on a uh, Dax Shepard. She's a huge fan of the, <laughs> the actor. I don't know though. I wasn't. There I you go. I don't. I didn't care too much. Yeah. Um, Doesn't matter. Right. Love it. Love it. Uh, so when are you guys gonna tie the knot? Um, July fourteenth. This year. This summer. This summer. Oh, yes. that's great. That's um, great. Yeah, we actually will be flying back to Austria to have the wedding or the ceremony there. Okay. Um, and then hoping to do like a little reception. A bigger reception next off season sure. here locally with all with all the guys and everything. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah. So July will be just like a, a small ceremony with, with just family. Right. Would have been too much with planning. Yeah. You know, a whole trip. With right before. Group. Yeah. Right, right before training camp starts. Um, h- how's wedding planning going? Are you involved in the process? <laughs> That's every guy's favorite question, right? Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I really am. Um, because it is. Um, taking place in Austria, so I'm I'm taking yeah. you know a lot of like the the middleman role in a lot of the the planning stuff. But mm-hmm. no, my my fiance has been great. She's been doing most of it, and and you um, guys met in college, correct? Yes, uh, freshman year of college. Okay, and wow. Dated ever since. Yeah. And, um, got engaged last year. And That's great. So yep. That's great. College sweethearts. It's a <laughs> yep. great, great, great story. Now, how did you how did you guys land on the idea of going back home for the wedding? Um, well, the, we got the, the house, the dog and everything here. We were planning on, on staying here, yeah. um, in the, in the long run as well. So, uh, we figured, you know, trying to do something over in, in Austria Love would it. be nice and Love having it. my family more involved. Um, yeah. so we do try to, you know, go back as much as possible and then also have like as much of events that we can yeah pushed over there too all right final couple of things getting to know you a little bit again bernard ryman's our guest fantastic story so far um going back to your austrian roots is there maybe this is a dumb question but is are, are there austrian uh food dishes that you can only <laughs> get there that you can't get here that you just sometimes really hanker for um i've i mean there are some some very good austrian dishes yeah um like a, a schnitzel, for example. Yes. Um, a goulash, which is made a little bit different than it is uh, than an American goulash. Yeah. Um, but I've been becoming more of a Austrian chef at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm tr- I've been trying to, you know, make make most of these meals. Yeah, um, take matters in your own hands, right? right yeah, right. bring bring home to home. Right, exactly. You so know? I've been trying to, you know, make a couple of those at home. Yeah. Uh, my fiancé's. Well, at least she told me that she liked them. I, I don't know that <laughs> if she actually did, but um, and you, you know, I'm trying my best. So, yes. um, often. Do you enjoy it. cooking? Um, it depends. <laughs> it's, I don't, I don't, that, it's probably a no. I, it's just not when it's too complicated or yeah. it's taking too long. I like the simple meals. Yeah, so. yeah. Join the club, man. Yep. Join the club. Bernard Ryman, our first guest on the person behind the pads we're taking the pads off we're getting to know colts players here in the off season bernard thank you so much for the stories and the insight into who you are and kind of what makes you tick and obviously your unique story coming from austria to the states uh really appreciate it thank you so much and uh, enjoy the rest of your off season good luck thank you